Yes, indeed, folks, the better Q&A, or probably not, knowing my look. Oh, dear. At least I'm allowed to be sarcastic and insult people on my Q&A, whereas Blizzard really can't. Like, we are going to insult our paying customers? Yeah, it doesn't get down too well. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, TB, this is from Genzin, level 80 troll mage on Trainer EU, was watching the live stream last night of Insidia on Nefarian. I was wondering if you think allowing top guilds into the beta to beat the content is a good idea. Had an argument in Gchat yesterday, I believe it is a good thing, free bug testing and whatnot, but the counter-argument was that they ruin it for everyone else. I mean, come on, if they don't beat it in the beta, they'll beat it after launch, right? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're still going to beat you. Don't get these delusions of grandeur, folks, that you're going to beat these guys. You're not. It's as simple as that. You know, the way that I like to view progression is to not actually rate it against other people. I like doing encounters that are hard and getting gratification out of that. Measuring myself against other guilds is really irrelevant for me. I mean, we've been into this argument before in the fact that I don't think that anyone should be testing. I think Blizzard should be. But at the end of the day, yes, and City are probably still going to beat you. And... As to whether or not they get preferential treatment and actually get into the beta that way, I really don't know. It does seem very likely, I mean, with Paragon getting that raid position over at BlizzCon, it seems likely that Paragon were given access specifically to test. But you never know, honestly. I mean, it is it is entirely possible to get people and get beta keys and things like that. But, like I say, I, I hold a split view on it, really. I, in the current... State of affairs, yes, you do need that to happen. It just sucks that they actually do it. It would be nice if everyone was restricted, but like I say, I, you know, I don't think Insidia should be barred from playing by any stretch of the imagination. They should have the same chance as anybody else, but that would require the way that it actually worked and the way that everything was tested to be significantly different. And the problem is right now that it's not. You know, and the way that it is, is I would rather have the guilds testing the content and making it good in the current environment than not have them test it and it suck on launch. What else do we have? Difficulty scaling. In regards to Firebands, you've noted that Blizz is taking a positive direction in regards to the difficulty curve, but how have the raids been? Are they sufficiently difficult to challenge players, but also allow people who aren't top-notch to learn and improve their gameplay? Or is that strictly the place of the Firebands? Are raids are tuned to be exclusively a growing scale of difficulty? Here's the thing, you don't learn anything by being a total failure and still succeeding. You can only learn if you fail. You know, failure is the b the best teacher. Like, I screwed this up. How did I screw it up? Ha, huh, okay, I screwed up for this, this, and this reason. Let's try and be better. It's very, very simple a concept, and it seems to have been eradicated a little bit within Wrath. I mean, it was definitely pushed to the sidelines. We're talking about goalposts that keep moving all the time and the bar is lowered for people that suck right now rating is really really good in cataclysm beta and you know what the best thing is the quote is the great quote that i literally shouted from the rooftops oh yeah this is awesome they said this week that most of the normal mode raid bosses are currently too easy and they'll be buffing them oh yeah, oh, yeah. that's what i'm talking about ladies and gentlemen Look upon thy raids and despair. Yeah, gonna be fun. Right now, the raiding is really good, and it's getting better as well. So fun. Hey, TV, here's a question. How do you feel about outdoor raid bosses being added into Cataclysm? I mean, like the whale shark or the giant mind-controlling octopus. It's not really a... The mind-controlling octopus isn't really a world boss, per se. But hey, do you think they're awesome to have around, or do you think they'll be removed for people QQing? No! No, they won't be removed. Oh no, I ran into this giant whale shark that's about 300 foot across. I didn't see it, Blizz! I didn't see it! Nerf immediately! I couldn't see it because all I see in my eyes is a constant stream of tears! <sighs> yeah, keep mid. Kill some scrubs. Yeah, Voilin also asks, do you jump for joy at the normal mode raid thing? Yeah! <laughs> yeah, I do. What else do we have in the Q&A? Are there any changes to the Orc starting zone? Some. Not enough to really justify a video. I don't know. I haven't been back there in a while. The last time I checked it, they aren't letting the boars wander around. They've actually put them in a farm now. It's like, well, that makes sense, I suppose. There's all these boars around, and all we're doing is keep killing them. Why don't we just, I don't know, corral them? Oh, look, there you go. There have been some changes to it. I don't know if there's enough to justify me doing a playthrough, but I will probably try it anyway. 
We'll see. I'll wait towards the end of the beta for that to happen because they might have some changes to still be done there. But yeah, it has been altered a little bit. Do you think the design of the zone has an impact on the questing experience? Yeah, of course it does. Always. The design of your zone depends on what kind of quests you can put in there. Oldham is a prime example. There's a lot of quests that involve you going into tombs and ancient shrines and things like that. And even the aesthetic of a zone can add to the way that quests are designed. And technically, you could design the quest in any zone, but it's going to work more effectively in the sum as opposed to others. I, I suppose you could have the big arena quest, the Crucible of Carnage. There could be a version in Oldham if you so desired. There could be one in Mount Hyjal, but it works better in Twilight Highlands, and it's just more atmospheric that way. As to whether or not it affects the mechanics, generally not. Unless, of course, you're talking about something like Vashir, where it definitely would affect the mechanics because you're underwater. But aside from that, no. Oh, I have so many people asking about this normal mode thing. Yeah, it's going to be great. Trust me. You know how there was an event when Wrath of the Lich King was released? There was an invention of zombies. Do you think there's going to be a cataclysm? But there already is. It's called the Shattering. It's definitely coming in. There's going to be tons of prequests. Stuff that's going to be happening. What do I... Do you feel they're removing Volley was a horrible Dissian? If not, why? <sighs> the pain. What is your opinion on the difficulty curve of Cataclysm? The problem with Wrath, in my opinion, was the difficulty curve was erratic, more accurately non-existent. I hope it's been improved in Cataclysm. Does it do an appropriate job of each previous tier? Normal modes, heroics, raids, and then heroic raids, and each previous boss preparing you for the next as best it can. Well, mostly, yeah. There have been some changes to heroics that I don't like, and to normals, I might add. I don't think normal really prepares you for heroic in any real way, because it just... It doesn't kill you, so you don't learn anything. And then when heroic does kill you, you start getting upset. Oh no, the normal five-man mode didn't do this to me. Well, yeah, it wouldn't. But, it's a lot better than Wrath. All I, that's all I can say. I don't think it's perfect. I think there is a lot of work that needs to be done on it still. Particularly the idea of heroics being hard. Like, the difficulty curve for heroics is actually all over the place. There are some which are really easy, like Vortex Pinnacle, and then the, you've got the brick wall that is the first boss of the stone core. You're going to have a variance in difficulty, but I don't think they're doing a, a particularly good job of making it ramp up. It's like, okay, boss is getting harder, 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 harder till the end. That's not the case. As to whether or not that should be the case, well, that's a matter for another time, honestly. I don't have the time to debate it. I don't have too much of a problem with there being a little bit of variance in the difficulty and not there being a straight curve up from first to last boss. But generally speaking, the last boss of a dungeon should be the hardest. And in many cases, that is not happening. Shadow Frank Keep would be a prime example. The last boss is a bloody joke, whereas boss one is a brick wall of hard and boss three isn't all that easy either. It's weird. What else have we got? Let's see. Do, 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 do. Hello, Turtle Biscuit. In the last patch on live, Blizzard removed the Chill of the Throne effect. Even though I can guess, what is your view on this? Well, didn't they remove the Chill of the Throne effect as a result of them changing the way that the talents and things worked? If they removed it so that everyone could see the content, then it's just yet another slap in the face for everyone that did it at the proper time. Chill of the Throne sucked anyway. I don't even know what this is. What is Daniel Rustage even emailing me about here? What about the kids who will leave WoW because of this? Then Blizzard will get less custom ears. I... What are you talking about? What? <laughs> God! Ugh... It's not, this is not a conversation, it's emails. You have to actually say what you're talking about. Oh, man. Hey, TB, have you tried Cho'Gal yet? Well, yeah, there's a video on my channel. What do you think of him? He's freaking hard, is what I think of him. Holy, he is so freaking cool. More Cho'Gal, please. He's nuts. Real, real big fan of that one. What are your plans for the podcast post-cataclysm? Well, I'll do what I always do. The show. It's been going on for five and a half years now. I think I can think of something to say. Hey, TB, you should... This is not a question or a topic. That is a request. And you know I don't take those. Cataclysm Q&A. Do you think there'll be special events? Oh, we already had that one. Anyone else? Something legitimate. 
do, 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 do. I think we might be a fresh out. Yeah. Yep, fresh out. Cool, shout out time, folks. Thank you very much for listening to the show today. Been going on a little longer than normal. Don't mind that. Email your shout-outs into the mail at gmail.com. That is the mail at gmail.com. Alternatively, you can send it through via IRC. IRC.quakenet.org. Hash or pound cynical Brit. Send it in. I'll do your shout-outs, and then we can end the show. I would like to give a shout-out to my former GM, Sistan of Bloodhoof US, for finally being able to carry a group of nine scrubs to Lich King. Oh, well done. A shout-out to me for playing DDO, because ICC got boring. Yeah, no kidding. That's from Zafia. A shout-out to all Warlocks for still being better than Mages, and you know it's true. Not really. I do more DPS than Mages than the Warlocks do. I tell you that for a fact. Will there be more five-man quests in the starting zones? No. There aren't. Will there be a Deathwing raid? No, Deathwing's just going to leave Azeroth quietly. There's not going to be a raid. Can I get a shout-out to the Guild Requiem on Bronzebeard US for rebuilding for Cataclysm and for putting up with me and my gnome sacrifices to the Troll Gods? Well, yes, you can. That is from Martin Smith. A shout-out to Oblivion on Dathramar. TNT are back to tank. Also, Mudkip Madness. That's from Anthony Goodmoo. I don't know what you're talking about. A shout-out to Dr. Insane in Tiny Chat, a.k.a. B-Drone. Please don't kill us. That's from Iron Eyes, a headbanger. He must be Scandinavian. He looks Scandinavian. A shout-out to Nordris Hill Radio, who are doing an interview with Yogg's cast tomorrow. Oh, God, why are you doing that? Oh, man. This is... No, don't do that. You have no idea what you're in for. Oh, my. That's from Amarillo. Yeah, 9 p.m. CEST, Central European Summertime, folks. That's 8 p.m. British time. Yogg's cast the interview tomorrow. I'm going to tune into that just to see what they do to you. Oh, man. Oh, I'd like to give a shout-out to the Grubs on Zul'jin. Grubs are scrubs. That's from Ida Ha. Can you get a shout out to the Orcish Delight on Storm Rage EU for Lich Reaver? From Lich Reaver. Thanks for two years of fun. See you in Cataclysm. A shout out from. What? A shout out to me, Patrick Cherish Render. Thanks. What? A shout out to Majors doing more DPS than Warlocks. True story. 14,500 DPS on Anixia. Why, yes. A shout out to my little undead priest, Sarias, who just entered Northrend to level there. I know there weren't any gimmicks that made me do that. I'm just that freaking hardcore. Big, big shout out to Zarin, Pramel, and Al Hyas. You guys are awesome. From Waza. I would like a shout out to Emerald Horde. Dream side. No. <laughs> Emerald Dream Horde side for being terrible. That's from Swed K, Troll Shaman. Shout out to my mate Bertom Varg for being awesome at tanking. Shout out to Jada on Senjin from Lilrex. I miss you. Where is Tinkertown? Tinkertown is currently located at the top of the Twilight Spire. Shout out to uh, Dinner Raiding on Earthen Ring EU for killing Sindragoza, heroic 25 man mode. Congratulations. Uh, do you think that some classes have too many buttons? Press button, it's hard. Yes. Shout out to my soon to be dwarf mage, Dumbledore. For finally getting Lore Master. Why would you do this? A shout out to JNex for leveling his second level 80 for trollface.jpg due to lack of content. I am so very bored. A shout out to Chillers, Frostmane EU, Zerg Guild, to Cataclysm. That's from Jesper Carlson. And last by no means least, ladies and gentlemen, a shout out to my guild, the Goon Squad, on Sargaris for all the great people we found and stuck with us. Now on to Kata. That's from uh, Serifera. Ladies and gentlemen, my name has been Total Biscuit. Go check out the rest of my videos on youtube.com slash Total Halibut. I know some stuff later on, I think. I'm going to maybe do some wargan. I'm also going to do a little guide. A little guide to rep vendors. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, we'll do that. And a few other things. Thank you ever so much for listening to the show. Always appreciate it, folks. Like I said, hospital Monday, so I don't know what will be happening with the videos. I will keep you posted. Oh, I'll also do one more shout-out, actually. That's to Laura... Oh, God, I never get a freaking name right. I'm going to screw this up, aren't I? Let me get it right so that I don't sound like a complete and total fool. Where is it on my freaking favorites list? Laura Shigihara. It's probably not the way that you actually do it. Oh, there's actually a download for this, but I refuse to play it. I'm sorry. I'm not playing a Blood Elf song. It's a good song, but it's Blood Elves, and it cannot infect my stream. 
But a shout out to Laurie Shigahara, nonetheless, for doing an awesome song about a terrible race. My name's been Total Biscuit. This has been Blue Please. You have been listening to it, as you might imagine. Thank you very much. Hmm. What can we go out on? Certainly nothing about blood elves, I'll tell you that for a fact. I can think of a better idea. Something about trolls by Daryl Brewer. It's the troll dance. Good night. <laughs>